So before we have Karen present, we're going to hear from Louisa. And um, with that, I welcome again everybody to our um, Atlanta meetup. We are actually rebranding, um, uh, and I'm sure Karen knows all this. Um, TechSoup is kind of shifting its platform, so we're actually going to be statewide um, with our next meeting and reaching out to folks across the great state of Georgia to join us virtually for these um, wonderful sessions that share, that give information with nonprofits on how we can harness technology to further our missions, deepen our development, and um, engage more stakeholders. So with that, I will stop talking. Um, I'm sure everybody will be relieved um, by that. And I'll invite Louisa to share her um, information with everybody. Louisa? Great. Hi, all. This is Louisa. I am with the Georgia Center for Nonprofits. And um, we're a capacity building nonprofit for nonprofits. And one of our big um, pushes and programs is Georgia Gives on Giving Tuesday. So I just wanted to come in and, and, and steal five minutes or less to just um, invite all of you to participate if you don't already. Um, we are, even though it's Georgia Gives on Giving Tuesday is the Tuesday after Thanksgiving, which is November 30th this year, um, we really do see that the sooner you prepare, the better. And Georgia Gives um, is Georgia's biggest day of giving. Um, we helped raise over $24 million last year on that day for the state of Georgia. And so um, we have a platform. It's a free platform. So if you need a platform, you can go to www.gagives.org and register and create a nonprofit. Uh, actually, you can search for your page and you should find it. All registered 501c3s, pull that information. We use Mighty Cause as the platform for that. So you can find your organization, find your page or claim your page and create, and create a page. But that's actually like one part of Georgia Gives. We really do try to um, provide resources for nonprofits. So that's why I'm coming in here today. We have an email list that I'll tell you where it is in a moment, but we're feeding, you know, baby steps, uh, tips every week and trying to push everybody onto the latest and greatest trends. So this year, we're really trying to push peer to peer fundraising. So if you haven't heard about that, definitely sign up for emails because we're going to be talking a lot about it, training folks on how to do that on, our, on the platform, all to be able to just make Georgia Gives successful. And we know that Georgia Gives helps sort of with year end appeals. So it can be a part of that or it can be a single campaign. It's up to you, right? There's ways to customize it. Um, the last thing I'll say is just, um, we also, in addition to resources, we actually also have prize opportunities. So if you register, um, and that's all in, a, in the link I'll share, you get, um, you're basically eligible for prizes and media opportunities. So that's when the campaign kicks off November 30th or November 1st, the whole month of November. Um, there are opportunities for our PR team to leverage your story. So if you register, you get a part of, you're a part of that, as well as maybe being a part of our PSA. We're, we're currently looking for different orgs that register to, to be featured in that. And that's a public service announcement that will feed throughout the state to broadcast and radio. So that's another great opportunity. And to get started, like I said, go to gagives.org. There's actually a tab at the top that um, it says nonprofits and you can click on that and then click on toolkit. That's kind of the hub for all of the different resources that we have for orgs. At the top is a link to get our emails. And then below are all the different, the four steps of success to get into the, you know, we have a successful Georgia Giz and that goes from how to set up your page to registering to then planning um, your campaign. And we'll be, we're actually sending an email this week because we have a storytelling webinar coming up at the end of the month. So definitely sign up, reach out to me via the email uh, that I posted earlier in the chat. Um, and yeah, uh, join us is really what I'm asking for. And if you have any questions, just let me know. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much, Louisa, for such valuable information. Uh, Louisa's Email is in the um, chat. I'll copy and paste it so it appears a little bit um, more currently as well. And um, truly the Georgia Center um, for Nonprofits is a great resource for everyone to know about. 
it. So poke on there, poke around on their webpage, subscribe to the newsletter, and definitely check out that toolkit. And Louisa will look forward to hearing in more detail um, from you and um, perhaps someone else from um, GCN at our fourth quarter meetup. Um, or TechSoup meetup um, meeting. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. And our featured speaker today is Karen Kramer with TechBridge. Karen is just a force of nature. Um, and I have had the privilege of working with her on a couple of projects. She is the community engagement manager for TechBridge. And I think she gets more than 24 hours in a day. I'm not sure how she makes that happen, but somehow she does while also balancing family responsibilities and community commitments and, and all of that. Um, and if you are not um, familiar with TechBridge, you're really in for a treat today. They really understand the, um, the world that nonprofit leaders live in with limited resources competing demands, and really um, can customize solutions to help your nonprofit not only survive, but to thrive in these, in all times, but in particularly these times when we were all relying so much on digital communications to continue to engage our stakeholders and deepen our missions. So um, with that, I will um, turn it over to Karen, who already has her PowerPoint up. And um, again, Karen, our deepest gratitude um, to you for joining us today. And we're looking forward to hearing more from you. Irene, thanks so much for having me. And um, everybody that's attending, it's been so fun to get to know Irene. And you all don't know this, but before the pandemic, Irene and I were planning um, a day for nonprofits to share about technology that they can use. And we had different panelists and speakers and we had it all planned out and we were ready to have it. Um, and then the pandemic hit and then we had to pivot and do it virtually. And um, we pulled it off and we were so proud of ourselves for our pandemic pivot. And uh, I'm Karen Kramer, I'm the Chief Community, Office, uh, Community Officer at TechBridge and um, excited to talk with you all today. TechBridge really wants to be a phone a friend away for our fellow nonprofits helping with any of your data and technology questions. So I'll share a little bit about TechBridge and the offerings that we provide for nonprofits, but I put plenty of time at the end for question and answer. So um, this is your chance to just have that phone a friend and ask data questions, ask technology questions, um, talk about different things that are going on in your nonprofits and how we might be able to help. So definitely want this to be interesting interactive and feel free to turn on your video if you want um, and glad to be with you all today and it's exciting that the TechSoup meetup is going from Atlanta to statewide because I think we can learn so much from each other and it's great to be thought partners and I think one of the blessings of the pandemic is that we're all learning how to work remotely and serve virtually and just um, can ask each other questions about how we're doing things and so I like that the community is uh, growing that's very exciting. So um, I wanted to share a little bit about TechBridge and our mission. TechBridge um, celebrated our 21st year, and we were founded by the technology community to help our fellow nonprofits with data and technology capacity building. And a couple of years ago, we changed our mission to focus on overcoming generational poverty because we had served thousands of nonprofits over 20 years but we felt like nonprofits that were on the front lines of the poverty were investing the least in themselves. And so we felt like that was where we could make the most impact as TechBridge is focusing on poverty alleviation nonprofits. Um, when our new CEO came in January, 2020, right before the pandemic, she really looked at everything that we did and wanted to narrow our focus even more. Um, and so we have, uh, developed four pillars where we do the most of our work. So we serve nonprofits that are focused on hunger relief. Um, our biggest nonprofit we serve is Feeding America and their 200 food banks and 60,000 partner agencies or food pantries. We run the supply chain logistics platform for them. We do a lot of work in homeless support, um, helping homeless support housing, uh, shelters, affordable housing, supporting the NeighborWorks America Network, um, anybody that is helping people to get housing, stay in housing, uh, preventing eviction, uh, we support those nonprofits. 
Um, our third pillar is social justice, which is very inclusive. Uh, we serve any BIPOC-led, BIPOC-serving nonprofit. We do a lot of work with civil legal aid organizations. Uh, we do a lot of work to prevent evictions and supporting like the Eviction Defense Collaborative in San Francisco. Um, and then just any nonprofit that is overcoming barriers to a just society. Um, so overcoming discrimination based on gender or sexual orientation or discrimination for refugees and immigrants, we support all of those nonprofits. And our fourth pillar is workforce development, which is also very inclusive. Anything cradle to career, educational services, tutoring, mentoring, youth development, um, job training, job placement, anything that is helping students and adults to get careers where they can make living wage jobs to be able to take um, very good care of their family, uh, we're supporting those nonprofits. We also have a technology career program in our workforce development. And I'll talk about that in a minute, but um, that's TechBridge, that's our mission. And these are our focus areas where we do our work. Um, just wanted to share about our leadership team. We have Nicole Armstrong, who's our chief executive officer. I'm talking with you today. We have Manish Mistry, who's our chief technology officer. Adam Walker is our chief marketing officer, just did a brand new website for us. And he was a founder of 48 and 48, which is another great resource for nonprofits that need a website done. They have Atlanta events frequently. We have Barb Augustin, who's our chief operating officer. Andre Dickens is our chief development officer. Julie Nooner is our chief program officer and she leads our technology career programs. And Deborah Manfrey, who's our director of finance. We, um, we're, we are headquartered in Georgia. We've done a lot of work in Georgia, Alabama, Tennessee, but we actually have a national reach. Um, last year, our fiscal year runs July to June. We serve 234 nonprofits across the country. We do a lot of work in California supporting civil legal aid organizations. We do a lot of work in New York City with um, emergency food supply in the United Way of New York City there. Um, we need to do better reaching out to the flyover states, but um, we have a really broad footprint. And so we'll serve any nonprofit that's focused on poverty alleviation that fits well within one of our four pillars of hunger relief, homeless support, social justice, and workforce development. A little bit um, more about what we do is we offer technology um, platforms and also services. So um, for hunger relief, we have built the supply chain management platform that Feeding America uses. So when Kraft or Heinz donate food to Feeding America, they get that to their 200 food banks who then get the food to the 60,000 food pantries. That all runs on TechBridge, um, our platforms. We also have a platform for homelessness where we're working in um, Nashville across five counties and 24 nonprofits where they're all sharing data with each other and coordinating services and not having to use the same platform. So we've built data interoperability and integration to be able to share data across organizations. So we can see what is the combination of programs and services that is helping people to move out of experiencing homelessness. In social justice, we've built Justice Server, which is a case management platform for legal services organizations where they can track their cases and the outcomes of those cases. We also have a pro bono attorney portal. So if you are a partner at a law firm and you're the pro bono director, your firm can look at the cases that are available from the different legal aid organizations, do a conflict check with your firm, and then take them on for representation and then report to your legal aid case manager of the progress that you've made in those cases. And then in our fourth pillar workforce development, we've developed a learning management system called Tech Steps. And so for our technology career program, we have built in a digital curriculum at different skills of no digital skills, low digital skills, medium and high. And we have all of those videos and recordings in our Tech Steps learning management systems. Um, we have direct services, which is our technology career program that I'll talk about in a minute. And then we have consulting services we do for all of our nonprofits, regardless of what pillar they're in. So we do a lot of technology assessments, looking at what technology you're using today, where are you swimming in spreadsheets, 
envisioning an ideal future state and then the, pro the projects you need to do to get to that ideal future state. We do a lot of Salesforce implementations for nonprofits, like helping them with the nonprofit success pack for donor and grants management. We help a lot with program and case management and outcomes measurement, tracking all of that in Salesforce. We do a lot of Microsoft helping with 365 and SharePoint. And um, then we also do custom applications. If there's nothing commercially off the shelf available to help nonprofits, we build things from scratch. We do mobile applications. We did one for um, Operation Hope. They have a Hope in Hand mobile app that helps their coaches connect with people that want financial coaching. So I share a little bit about um, our different pillars and some of the nonprofits that we've worked with. So in Hunger Relief, we've, of course, worked with Feeding America and move a half a billion pounds of food through that supply chain logistics platform. Um, we also worked with Second Harvest of Middle Tennessee, and we did a project called Project Preserve, where they take um, meals that are ready to eat, and then they freeze them, and then they provide them to other nonprofits that are serving people experiencing food insecurity. And then we also have a virtual food drive where um, food banks and food pantries can raise money and we have a cool like gamification where there's a person they're shopping in the grocery store they're putting items in their cart and then say they get to check out and it's a hundred dollars and they say well do you know that the food bank can get a hundred dollars worth of food for fifty dollars will you donate fifty dollars to the food bank so we're helping food banks to raise money there was a good question from Paula Howell who asked if we do any translation technology. Um, and that is not something that we focused on as at TechBridge, but um, we definitely have partners that we could refer you to um, if you need help with translation technology. And we also have a really good partner that has helped us with um, thinking through webinars and our different website and platforms and how can we make them more accessible to people that have uh, visual challenges, uh, hearing challenges. And so I think that's something that we'll see more of is how can we make um, these digital platforms much more inclusive and accessible to many different audiences. So I'm glad to share that resource with you all. Um, I'm going to have my email at the end and definitely open to um, getting questions from you or um, scheduling a meeting to discuss things. Yep, Paula said that's what we're working on now, accessibility. So I got a good resource for you, Paula, that I can share with you. Um, so in homelessness, we have worked with the United Way of Greater Nashville, and I would say that they're a very progressive United Way and they have a family collective and it's working with families that have been experiencing homelessness and bringing together all of the services that those families need to be self-sufficient after two years. So they have Safe Haven Family Shelter, they have Catholic Charities that helps families to find affordable apartments. They make sure that the kids are enrolled in school, whether it's early childhood education or after school programs or even enrolled in the public school system. Um, and then they really work with the adults. Um, are, have they gotten their GED? Do they want job training? Um, and then once they're getting a job that's making a good wage, talking with them about financial coaching and helping them to manage their money well so that they'll be sufficient for the long term. So we are really excited that we're working across five counties in Middle Tennessee, 24 different nonprofits, and they've had great outcomes of the families that they prevented from becoming homelessness, becoming homeless, the families that they have housed that were experiencing homelessness, um, and then enrolling adults in higher education programs and helping these families to be self-sufficient. Um, this is the work that I came to TechBridge to do because I feel like a lot of times nonprofits operate in silos and we don't really know across time what's that combination of programs and services across different nonprofits that's leading to the best outcomes in our community. So our vision at TechBridge is how can we have predictable pathways out of poverty, out of homelessness? What's that combination of programs and services that's most successful? You know, for some people, a tech aptitude is it 
going to a TechBridge technology career program and taking four months of technical instruction and then getting a job paying $60,000, $70,000 a year that then helps housing to become affordable for the family or to move to a neighborhood with better schools to improve the education of the children in the family. Like what are, what's that combination that's breaking the cycle of generational poverty? Um, TechBridge is really focused on that and being the nonprofit pipeline of data to know what's working in our community. Um, in social justice, we have focused a lot on civil legal aid organizations um, and supporting them. So we have been working in um, San Francisco. They passed a law that tenants that are facing eviction have the right to representation. And so we have helped the legal aid organizations to coordinate with each other, like organization A, you're going to need to take on 100 cases, B, you're going to need to take on 250, and how can you communicate with each other on how are you doing and are you preventing um, eviction? We're also doing that with the Health Consumer Alliances, helping different nonprofits to share data with each other and better coordinate legal care um, for people that need representation. And we're really thrilled by all the pro bono attorneys nationally that step up to um, take on these cases because in civil legal aid, uh, clients often don't have the right to representation. And so we're thrilled that the pro bono attorneys are stepping up and have donated $6 million worth of professional legal services um, to different clients. We are having a social justice summit and that is coming up in March, 2022. And we'd be glad to invite you. Um, and we are sharing about the different nonprofits that we've worked with and the areas that they're addressing. We're gonna focus on eviction defense and we're also gonna focus on civic engagement and voting rights. So that's something we've got coming up. And then in our workforce development, we started our technology career program in 2018. It's grown to become multiple programs where we're not only serving adults, but we're serving youth and are starting an apprenticeship program. And we have worked with many different uh, employers and partners, and the employers are often providing curriculum to train unemployed and underemployed residents in tech skills. They usually do about four months of technical training and then go on to really nice living wage jobs with um, employers that participate in our program. And we've also helped a lot of nonprofits that are also focused on uh, workforce development, like Multi-Agency Alliance on Children. They serve children in foster care. And so we have built out the client management system that tracks the youth and the different uh, nonprofits that serve the youth, the different programs that they're enrolled in. And then they also have an apprenticeship program with Anthem, where they are learning tech skills, and then they get a job with Anthem after they graduate. Um, and so we are just really excited that we've impacted 664 families um, with digital literacy, and we serve families from no skills, low skills, middle skills, and high skills um, through this program. And so this has been really successful. We started the program because we heard from the technology community that um, we have all these jobs that we're really trying hard, but we're struggling to find community residents that meet the skill sets to meet job demand and industry demand. And so um, we just have a history of helping non-technical people learn technical skills um, and be able to train them. And it's, it's just changing people's lives. Like I know we've had students that before the pandemic were working at Walmart we're couch surfing and sleeping with neighbors and friends, and we're really having a trouble meeting, you know, uh, making ends meet. Um, then they go through our technology career program. They're making $70,000 a year. They're working at NCR and they're able to work remotely and safely um, during the pandemic. So this is really changing lives and we're really proud of this work. Um, and then just a little bit about TechBridge, what we provide, we provide IT strategy and services. Um, we help with data strategy, help with databases, any kind of collaboration tools and like helping you move to the cloud so you don't have to have a physical server so you can access files remotely. And like I said, if there's not good products available for nonprofits, we will build custom applications. So I wanted to share about a few of these products and services. Um, I would say since the pandemic, we've been super busy at TechBridge and <laughs> the calls I get are help, 
We need to be able to work remotely. We need to serve virtually. Um, typical use cases will be, um, hey, like we used to have like our controller and they would have to go into the office and they would have to like print checks and it would have to be signed by two people. And we're realizing in the pandemic, we can't operate like that anymore. Or we're swimming in spreadsheets or we have this old VPN system that people are logging into and it's slow or we have an old access database and if there's more than a couple of on us, we, we crash it. And so we are really trying to help all the nonprofits that reach out to us. How do you work remotely and how do you serve virtually? And so one of the ways that people can work together well um, and work remotely is Microsoft 365. And so TechBridge does a lot of um, helping you implement this and configure it at your organization, but also training you how to use it. And that's a common call we get is, well, our nonprofit has Office 365, but like, what's the difference between OneDrive and SharePoint and like, should I use Teams? Should I use Zoom? Should I use GoToMeeting? You know, um, and like, what's like the best value? You know, what should what should I choose? And so, um, I would say we have consulting to help you implement it, to configure it really well for your organization's needs, and train you how to use it. So Microsoft 365, you might have been using um, for a while, but it's totally in the cloud, which means you can access your documents, your applications, your data from anywhere. You don't need a VPN. You just go to any web browser and you can log in and use Microsoft 365. And it's also able to be if you have a desktop at home or in the office, if you use a laptop, if you want to use it on your cell phone, on your iPad, or your different tablets, it's available to use on that. Um, we also like it because it's cross-platform. We have people at TechBridge that use PCs. We have people that use Macs, um, and we're doing well, you know, across all devices. And then um, iOS is for like Mac if you have an iPhone, and then Android. I I don't have an iPhone. I have an Android phone, but I have a Mac computer. So um, it works for everybody in the different technology that you're using. Um, wanted to share about the different technology uh, terminology is OneDrive is like your individual file storage in the cloud. So it's like your personal drive in a cloud. And those are for like documents that you're working on that you might not be ready to share with people or it's like private. Um, and so that that can be your OneDrive, like, you know, your drafts, things that you're working on. SharePoint is for documents that you want to share with your whole entire team. So at TechBridge, we have a SharePoint and we have a folder for each of the nonprofits that we serve. And so if you want to know what's going on with one of the nonprofits, you just go into the folder and there's like their documents and their PowerPoints and their spreadsheets. And so we know it's easy to look in that location and find things. Um, we like SharePoint because it's really good for your IT manager to administer it and decide like, okay, well, the fundraising team is going to only have access to this folder and they'll see who our donors are or they'll see the grant applications that might have salary information that we don't want the whole team to know about. Um, and that's the good thing about SharePoint is really accessing who on the team has access to what and being able to limit that access. But say I need um, something from another team, like I can have quick links in my SharePoint to get to other teams folders of things that we both work on together. Um, and then Teams, I'll show you a little bit more, but is great for communication. Like they have chat, you can do um, video calls, uh, you can upload documents and you can share these links with people inside your organization and outside. So if you wanted to share it with like your board members and have a Teams portal for them or for volunteers, you're able to do that through Teams. Um, Microsoft has really good pricing. Um, look at this, that some of the, the donation licenses, and this is all on TechSoup, some of it is zero, user, zero dollars per user per month. So Microsoft has great deals and they're bringing this amazing technology to nonprofits um, and giving great grants to nonprofits. So um, after this call, if you wanna look on TechSoup and look on the Microsoft page, I think you will find it really helpful. Um, if you need help knowing what kind of licenses you need, they have different types like this E1 or business essentials, um, let us know at TechBridge and we're glad to help you know what kind of licenses you might need. 
and I can share this PowerPoint with Irene and she can share it with you all afterwards. Um, OneDrive, I, as I was saying, is cloud-based for the individual and you have one terabyte of storage for each user, which is a lot of data and space. Um, and then you can access and edit your files from all your devices. Um, so you can use it on your phone, you can use it on your desktop, your laptop. You can collaborate with others and share inside and outside your organization. So you can send a link to something that you have in your OneDrive um, and that viewer can view it or you can give them access to edit. Um, and it's a great way to back up files. I don't know about you guys, but sometimes I can be guilty of putting things on my desktop and then am I getting it up to the cloud? OneDrive is so much better than using your desktop because if you put it in your OneDrive, it's backed up and you're not gonna lose it. Uh, there's nothing worse than doing a grant application and losing it and having to start again. So that's a great way to have things in the cloud. And then you're able to um, sync all of your files. So documents are available on any internet to connected device because they're stored in the cloud. And so um, it's also really good for your IT manager that if there's like a device theft or loss, um, data is available in the cloud, but like your device can be securely locked down or like the data can be wiped from your device to prevent a data breach. So we know that cybersecurity is getting more and more and more important and our nonprofits are at risk. We've had some of our nonprofits that have had phishing attempts where they um, like get emails about and then they click on a link. Um, we had one um, CEO tell us that the development director was like, hey, I went to Target and got those 50 gift cards that you asked for. And he said, I never told you to go to Target and get 50 gift cards. And, you know, she worked for a children's organization where they really would do that around the holidays. And so they were going to try and get the gift card numbers um, from this development director. So um, that's something that nonprofits need to be really careful of. So just some um, frequently asked questions about files. Are they confidential? Yes, if you're, they're in your OneDrive, they can only be seen um, by you. And you should use OneDrive if you're gonna, like it's files that you're not ready to share with your work group or your whole organization yet. So it could be like expenses or performance reviews or financials. Um, and the difference is OneDrive is for the individual, SharePoint is for the group, department or org. Um, and then if you put things in the recycle bin, they stay for 30 days. And then Teams, you can use this to communicate because they have chat, they have meetings, they have calls. So you can go into your Outlook and just push the Teams button and it'll schedule a Teams meeting for you to meet on a video call like this. Um, it's great for collaborating with your team. And it works really well with different third-party apps and processes and devices. And it's very secure. So your conversations on Teams are confidential. And um, this is a great way to communicate with your um, team members to answer quick questions. I know sometimes we feel like we could do email all day, every day. And so Teams might be a quicker way to get a quick question answered from one of your teammates. Um, the chat, it stays there and you can like search for it. So if somebody sent me a link in the chat to a document, I can go and search for it later. And I find it's easier than searching my inbox for email. Um, but some links can expire after 30 days. And everybody with the Microsoft um, Office can attend or host a meeting. Um, and then SharePoint is for collaborating on different apps with your team. And so when do I use it? You know. OneDrive for individual teams is communicate and collaborate on documents and SharePoint is sharing documents with entire departments or organization wide. Um, quickly, and then I'll open it up for questions. I'll share a little bit about TechBridge does a lot of work implementing Salesforce and configuring it for nonprofits needs. Salesforce develops the nonprofit success pack. And this is for donor management, grants management, fundraising management on top of Salesforce. Salesforce provides 10 free licenses to nonprofits. So once you uh, do your initial implementation, if you're under 10 licenses, then you're not having ongoing costs uh, for Salesforce. So we do a lot of Salesforce implementation. And then for uh, program management, we do a lot of um, 
Salesforce, we do exponent case management, program management module, uh, nonprofit cloud case management. And so nonprofits like, oh, we get 10 free licenses and we can track our donors and our grants and our clients in all one database. And then eventually they'll hire one person who will be the system administrator um, for Salesforce. And they can onboard new users, offboard new users. They can add fields, change drop downs. You get a new grant, you need to track new information. You know, we teach them to be a system admin and to be able to do that. And we're there when they run into trouble and we can provide them with support. Um, but we feel like it's a technology that nonprofits can really um, own and take full advantage of. So that's why we do a lot of Salesforce implementations. Um, I wanted to give you all some resources. TechSoup had a great article about resources for remote work during the COVID-19 outbreak. Um, you know, I'm, I'm always honest about what does TechBridge do and don't do. We don't do phones and internets, but Mike um, Russell at ETS Solutions, he and his team are my go-to if you need help with phones and internet. Um, John Jarvis used to work at TechBridge and he works at WorkSmart and they're in IT managed services. So if you need any help with um, hardware or you do still have physical servers that you wanna move to the cloud, he can help with that. Um, and then I would say TechBridge, we focus on nonprofit software and that's kind of how you differentiate um, the different resources that nonprofits often need. And now I will open it up to questions. Feel free to um, unmute and ask the question or go ahead and put it in the chat. That'd be selfish and jumping quick. I'm curious, uh, I guess kind of two part question. What have you seen that is requested the most and then kind of paired with that, what have you seen that uh, people maybe don't ask for, but that once they see that tech implementation, they're like, oh my goodness, I didn't know I needed this. Thank you. Yeah. I would say TechBridge is known the most for Salesforce and we get asked the most about Salesforce. I think what nonprofits don't know is they say, well, I do have Office 365, but I had no idea it could do all that. And my staff have no idea how to use it. And so we're still sending lots of emails with lots of attachments instead of the link or our SharePoint has become a junk drawer and it's really unorganized and we can't find anything. You know, maybe it's time for a reorganization and kind of like an upgrade and starting fresh, like even including TechBridge, we did that this year. Like we have a new SharePoint, it's a breath of fresh air. Everything we had before is archived. So we haven't lost anything, but the things that we use every day was migrated and it's like a breath of fresh air. It's, it's beautiful. So I would say that nonprofits have a lot of technology, but they often don't know how to use it. Um, we did a training for a local nonprofit in Atlanta on, on like more in depth, but like what's OneDrive? What is Teams? How do I use it? How do I access it? And the staff were like, oh, wow, we didn't know that we could do all this and we're using it so more effectively. And so that's really helped them to work better together remotely and more collaboratively. Um, I would also say at TechBridge, we did this communications document recently of like, when are we gonna use email? When are we gonna text? When are we gonna use a phone call? When are we gonna use Teams? Um, how, how responsive should we be? Like if we get a text, you know, can you, text back five days later, or should you be more prompt? Um, and so that was really helpful to us to have communication practices as a team of like, this is what we're going to abide by. Um, and then we're doing like monthly pulse checks. Like, how are we doing? Like, do we have cameras on in meetings? Like, are people answering teams? Are they answering emails? What's working? What's not working? And how can we improve? Great question. Awesome. Thanks. Yeah. It's interesting. The statement that they have the tech, they just don't know necessarily how to use it best. So it could be a, you got the tool sitting in front of you, you just need that education, whether you know it or not. Yeah, nonprofits think technology is the silver bullet. And if I just put it in place, it's gonna be great and it's gonna solve all of our problems. And I don't think it's a silver bullet. I think you really have to look at like processes and how can we be more efficient and, like when we do a Salesforce implementation, we're getting to know how you do your job. And then we're teaching you how to do your job in Salesforce, and like building it out. So it works with your workflow and your processes. 
And so I think that's really important. We used to have a board member, Cy Fenton, and he was the CIO of Books A Million. And he would say, I tell my team all the time, if you take new technology and then old business processes, then you get really expensive new technology. And he's like, you always have to start with the processes, make them more efficient, and then put in the technology that allows you to do those more efficient processes. Awesome, love it, thank you. Sure. Other questions? Karen, while um, folks are thinking of other questions, um, I saw some very familiar names on your um, clients and, and partnership mm -hmm. list. Is there a um, maybe a, a break point at which it does make sense for a nonprofit to reach out to you um, for support? Or should everybody, no matter their size, feel free to reach out and, and you'll guide them through if you can help them, if you can work within their budget? Yeah, I would say I really want to be the phone a friend away. You can always book 30 minutes of my time to ask questions, to get answers and guidance. I'll be totally honest about you know, this is right in TechBridge's wheelhouse. We can help you with this, or this isn't a good fit, but I would refer you to these trusted partners um, or here are other organizations that do this kind of work. So I'll, I'll always try and give like a really honest and fair assessment if you're the right fit for TechBridge. I would say that um, nonprofits really kind of are bootstrapping with technology, like what's free, duct taping things together, swimming in spreadsheets, we're probably best for nonprofits that have budgets over 2 million that have over five full-time employees um, because of the work that we're doing um, in Salesforce. We, we could probably do like Microsoft for the smaller um, nonprofits, but when you're doing a CRM implementation and eventually you're going to need a system admin that's adding the users, you know, onboarding and offboarding users, probably having a budget of over 2 million in your annual revenue is probably the sweet spot for working with TechBridge. Just, just to be totally honest, and I feel for startup uh, nonprofits, I started one myself and you just kind of have to bootstrap and duct tape things together till you have enough revenue as a nonprofit to have a good IT budget. But it's been interesting to me during the pandemic is, you know, three years ago, if there was an economic downturn, nonprofits would cut their technology and their marketing budget. But with the pandemic, we've seen nonprofits um, really invest in that technology budget, knowing that they need to work remotely, serve virtually. And we've had funders be really supportive of our nonprofits and like, oh, it takes you this long to do the grant application or grant report. Like, let's do a one-time, you know, technology transformation and let's fund that for you. We had one housing agency in um, Texas and, you know, like Texas is so spread out. So they were thinking they were going to go to different geographies and they said, working remotely is working really well during the pandemic. Like they did housing counseling and they're like, we are thrilled because our clients are taking classes like on demand on the weekend at night and they're requesting more information on the home buying process. And so we're serving even more and more clients without having the big geographic footprint that we thought we'd have to have. So some of the nonprofits have really embraced this and um, are serving more clients or spending more time with them using technology. I love the compliment. Um, we're thankful that you were blunt direct. <laughs> I'll always be that for you guys, you know, just, just honest. It's fun Any for me because I was a social worker here? before I joined TechBridge. So I know how it is working in a nonprofit, swimming in the spreadsheets, because I was that person. And so <laughs> just trying to help all the nonprofits get out of swimming in their spreadsheets and work more effectively. Tracking the grant deliverables is definitely yes. something that piqued my interest. Yeah. One of our nonprofits said a funder asked us a new question on the grant report and we counted and it took us 82 hours to come up with the answer. So we want to solve that for you all. Yes. <laughs> Any 
Well, if there aren't any more questions, we'll give everybody um, nine minutes back in their day. Uh, we can't thank Karen enough for sharing um, so much valuable information with us. And while there weren't many people on the Zoom today, there were a lot of people who registered for um, our session today and they will receive the recording. Um, so we'll, we're pleased to um, support and, and trumpet all the wonderful resources and services that TechBridge brings to nonprofits, not only in the metro area in Georgia, but from what we saw clearly across the country. Um, so we thank um, Karen for her time. And of course, we're, we're proud that TechBridge is headquartered right here in Atlanta, so we can um, kind of claim them <laughs> as our own. But with that, we wish everybody a, um, a great rest of the day. Be on the lookout for our next meetup, um, which is in October. And Matt, maybe you can, wait a minute, I think I got it. Maybe not. Um, it's in October and we are, we will be getting ready for Georgia Gives Day. Um, or maybe it's in November. I will find it, I promise. <laughs> My apologies, I should have had that all ready to go. Um, and we'll be, but we'll be doing a deeper dive into um, Georgia Gives Day and equipping you with resources for that. So um, with that, everybody have a great rest of your Tuesday. Appreciate Thanks it. Thanks for having me, Irene. So nice to meet everyone. Good to see you, Karen. Take care. Take care.